So we'd like to call this meeting to order. It's 10 o'clock uh, a.m. Uh, this is a, a subcommittee of the Senate Committee on Tourism and with the authorization of the chair, Senator Nancy Binay, uh, there is a subcommittee uh, created to hear a number of bills uh, referred to the Tourism Committee. Uh, the following, Senate Bill 1615, recognizing Balero Aurora as the birthplace of Philippine surfing, filed by this representation. House Bill 5961, declaring Balero the birthplace of Philippine surfing and an ecotourism de destination by Representative Romel Langara, Representatives Madrona, Chato Alvarez, et al. Senate Bill 1166, uh, declaring Ipagasa Island ecotourism cluster and protected area. And uh, House Bill House Bill 5. House Bill authored by Congressman Pimentel also on uh, to declare Pagasa ecotourism cluster. And Senate Bill 238, this is for the Northern Antique Protected Seascape and Landscape Act of 2022 by Senate President Pro Tempore Legarda which was already filed in the previous Congress, the 18th Congress, and the Committee on Tourism conducted one joint committee hearing and one TWG meeting. There's also a resolution, Senate Resolution Number 472, uh, for the creation of policy reforms and budgetary expenditures to develop the Philippines' potential to be the leading country in the world for sustainable nature-based tourism by this representation. Uh, allow me to greet our guests present. Uh, we'd like to greet our... Uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel, our uh, from Surigao, our uh, Grandmaster in the fraternity. Uh, good morning, Worshipful Sir. Uh, to Congressman Romel Langara, uh, my uh, successor in the as Congressman of the Province of Aurora, <laughs> better good morning, Mr. Chair. than I was. <laughs> good morning, Sir. Uh, Mayor uh, Red Angar is also there. Uh, and uh, the mayor of, uh, we also have with us officials from uh, Calayan, Calayan Mayor Roberto Del Mundo, Palawan Member Ryan Maminta, Palawan Board Member Aris Arzaga, and Director Levita Lagrada of the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, or PCSD. Uh, we also have with us uh, from... Tibia Wantike, Mayor Clemens Bandoja, and also Board Member Jake Calban from Valero Aurora. And we have NHCP Chairperson Dr. Emmanuel Calairo and several others. May we ask, uh, Bernardine, could you have the complete list? Could you recognize, acknowledge our guests uh, individually? Of course, I'd like to acknowledge, uh, I see my colleague, our colleague, our Deputy Majority Leader, Senator J.V. Ercetol Solagdin. Good morning, sir. Thank you for attending. So, Bernardine Comsec, could you acknowledge our uh, our guests properly, please? Uh, yes, Senator. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, from the House of Representatives, we have Representative Romel Rico Angara from the Lone District of Aurora. Morning, sir. And also online, we have Representative Johnny Pimentel from the Second District of Surigao del Sur. Morning. Um, from our government agencies, from the Department of Tourism, we have Attorney Gliza G. Sarmiento, Chief Tourism Operations Officer, together with Ms. Faye Reyes, Mr. Ramil Baswell, and Ms. Joy Kunanan. Um, from the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, or TIAZA, we have virtually present is Ms. Rebecca Rochelle Austria. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, we have Under Secretary Augusto de la Peña, Organizational Transformation and Human Resources, USEC, also with Ms. Chanel Napoles. From the DNR, Biodiversity Management Bureau, physically present is Mr. Reneo Vicente. He's a Senior Ecosystem Management Specialist of the National Parks Division and Mr. Joaquin Rogelio Silvestre, Project Evaluation Officer of the Coastal and Marine Division. Um, from the Department of Public Works and Highways, we have Division Chief Rosemary B. Del Rosario from the Environmental and Social Safeguards Division Planning Service. Together with her are Mr. Gregorio Dizon and Ms. Mary Ann Glorioso. 
and also Mr. Ralph De La Cruz. From the DILG, we have Attorney Gino Lavarias from the Office of the Assistant Secretary for External and Legislative Affairs. From the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, we have the Director for Trade Services and Industry Staff, Director Bien A. Ganapian, uh, on site with us. And also Ms. Madeleine Monteramo, Supervising Economic Development Specialist, and Mr. Dominic Andrade, Economic Development Specialist. From the DBM, we have Director Trisha Baraan, together with Budget and Management Analyst Ms. Ray Tonko and Ms. Madeline Napalang. From the National Parks Development Committee, uh, we have Executive Director Cecil Lorenzano Romero. Good morning, ma'am. Um, from the president of the Philippine Tour Operators Association, or PhilToa, we have Ms. Fe Abling Yu physically present with us. Hi. Um, from, of course, from the municipality of Belair, we have Mayor Red Ronan Angara together with Mr. Lisander Kerihero. Also, we have uh, physically present Mr. Jake Galban, board member, Committee on Tourism of the Sangguniang Panlalawigan province of Aurora. From the DNR Region 3, we have Assistant Regional Director for Technical Services, Mr. Joselito Blanco. From the United Philippine Surfing Association, or UPSA, virtually present is Mr. Hil Canlas, the Secretary General of the National Sport Association. Uh, the President of the Philippine Film Studios Incorporated, Mr. Lope Jun Hu Huban is also with us virtually, uh, and also Mr. Raymond Villapando from the Aurora National High School, and Mr. Raul Tolentino of the Aurora Surf Riders Association. From the DNR Region 4B, we have Legal Division Lawyer Attorney Carla Maluping. From the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, we have Director and Chief Designate of the ECAN Zones Management and Enforcement Division, Ms. Levita Lagrada, virtually present, together with Ms. Charlene Acosta. Um, we also have Mr. Chair, the Mayor of the Municipality of Calayaan, Mayor Roberto Del Mundo. Good morning, sir. Together with him is Municipal Tourism Officer, Mr. Kenja Pupanda, and Ms. Maria Corazon Claridad. Uh, we also have from the province of Palawan board member, Mr. Ryan Maminta, physically present. Good morning, sir. We also invited the Palawan Biodiversity Conservation Advocates uh, Incorporated, the lead of operations and senior field officer of Center of Sustainability Philippines Incorporated and the Palawan Tourism Council, as well as the Palawan State University and the Western State the Marine Biology of the Western State University, and Pinag Isang Lakas ng Leader Kabataan ng Palawan or Piglas. From the DOT Region 6, we have Ms. Crisanta Marlene Rodriguez, virtually present. Uh, and physically present with us are Ms. Cynthia Blancha, OIC, Provincial Environment and Natural Resources Officer of Antique, and Mr. Rodel Lababit, OIC, Community Environment and Natural Resources Officer. Uh, we also have virtually present the mayor of the municipality of Tibiao, Mayor Clemens Bandoha. Good morning, sir. And we have Ms. Elizabeth Maklang uh, from the protect, uh, protected area superintendent from the Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park City of Puerto Princesa. Um, from the Biodiversity Conservation Society of the Philippines, we have Policy Committee Chair Mr. Edmond Leo Rico. We have Ms. Angeline Sonko from the Protected, uh, the Protected Area Superintendent to Bataha Management Office. Um, Ms. Billy Crystal Dumaliang from the Masungi G Reserve. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. And also, for the record of this subcommittee, the chair intended to invite the Private Sector Advisory Council, PSAC, on tourism for today's hearing. However, the PSAC on tourism raised to the subcommittee that it is still in the transition phase. PSAC on tourism will assist and provide inputs to the chair and to the subcommittee at the appropriate time. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec Bernardine. Again, good morning and thanks to all our resource persons for attending. Uh, does, uh, if Senator JV uh, can intervene at any time, I also see Senator Bongo, our uh, 
uh, colleague, the chair of uh, the Committee on Sports and Committee on Health. Good morning, sir. Uh, just for uh, information of the body, we will be taking up, uh, giving the floor first to the authors of the various bills uh, who filed uh, in order for their sponsorship remarks, and then we'll go to the resource person. So first, we'll take up the bills on the Pagasa Island ecotourism. So we have a Senate bill, and we also have a House bill. The author is here. See. Congressman Johnny Pimentel, you have the floor, sir, uh, if you wish to sponsor your uh, uh, or say anything in support of your measure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, uh, if uh, I be allowed, I would like to read the rationally before the uh, uh, for the reason why we have mm -hmm. filed House Bill number 6228. The rationale in advancing this measure is a rather novel one to assert our sovereign rights, not just through military action or hard diplomacy, but through economic initiative or soft diplomacy. I thank Senator Sani Angara for filing a counterpart bill in the Senate through Senate Bill Number 1166. This collaboration will surely ensure that our lofty purpose is truly realized. Pagas Island in the West Philippine Sea is a 37.2 hectare landmass that lies some 480 kilometers northwest of Puerto Persesa City. Surrounded by shallow coral ranges, Pagasa has been occupied by the Philippines since 1970. Pagasa is the largest landform of the Kalayaan Island Group, which also includes the islets of Likas, Parola, Lawak, Kota, Patag, and Panata, and Balagtas Reef, Ayungin Shoal, and Shoal. The Kalayan Island Group is at the northeastern section of the disputed Spratly Archipelago. On June 11, 1978, then President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. issued Presidential Decree Number 1596, which created the Municipality of Kalayan over the Kalayan Island Group under the province of Palawan. The Kalayan Municipal Government is based in Pagasa, which is also the town. Lone Barangay, a six-class municipality, Kalayaan is the least populated town in the Philippines with only 193 residents who all live on Pagasa according to the 2020 census. This bill seeks to declare Pagasa Island a recreational fishing tourism site for the purpose of, first, developing the island into a thriving community by attracting both foreign and local tourists particularly visitors inclined to engage in recreational fishing, including catch and release. Second, which currently has title to no income, a new recurring revenue stream from tourism-related activities. And third, affording small fisher folk supplemental sources of income from tourism-related activities, such as leasing their boats and services to tourists including visitors that may wish to fish in around the island for leisure, exercise, or competition. Furthermore, the ultimate purpose of this bill is to pave the way for the development of Pagasa, considering that other countries claiming all or parts of the Spratly archipelago are also increasing their presence on the islands, reefs, and shoals that they occupy there. It is submitted that this measure will gain favorable a response. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Pimentel. Uh, we note uh, that we uh, are reading here the submission of uh, Palawan Congressman Edgardo Egay Villagracia Salvame, and he's supportive of the measure, uh, but he has some suggestions. Uh, uh, he notes that uh, the declaration as a protected area of the Pagasa Island cluster will help ensure its coastal and marine resources are protected from overfishing, poaching, large-scale ocean filling or reclamation, and safeguarding the remaining coral reef ecosystem in the area, which comprise 34% of the world's total coral reefs, and is home to over 3,000 species of fish and 600 species of uh, coral reef. He also recommends the following, that the executive director of the Palawan Council for sustainable development, be considered as a member of the ecotourism cluster governing board, 
and that the clear terms of reference as the jurisdiction over the island's development be threshed out as well to avoid overlapping of functions between and among the LGU and government agencies. Uh, we'll suspend consideration of this measure with the permission of the authors to give way to the authors of the uh, Aurora or Balear uh, surfing bill and uh, for sponsorship, and then we can uh, go back to it for comments from the resource persons. So we'd like to suspend consideration of that measure and then uh, uh, open consideration of House Bill 5961, uh, declaring Balear as an ecotourism destination and the birthplace of Philippine surfing, and a similar bill filed by this representation, that's Senate Bill 1615. May we recognize the author in the House, Congressman Romel Langara. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, I'd like to deliver my sponsorship speech on House Bill uh, 5961. Uh, despite uh, being a small town, the municipality of Balear, tucked in the peaceful province of Aurora, has become one of the most visited tourist spots in the country. Following its rise to popularity as the perfect surfing destination for both beginners and advanced surfers, located on the beautiful east coast of Luzon, Balear has attracted local and foreign tourists, boasting of its great food, friendly people, and comfortable yet affordable lifestyle everyone can enjoy, even in short trips in town. The majestic Sabang Beach in Balear, while beautiful on its own right, is backed up by great history, which makes every surfing activity in its waters more meaningful. As early as 1969, when surfing was not yet known to Filipinos, foreign missionaries who visited Balear started surfing activities on its beaches. These foreigners, regardless of their nationalities, were commonly referred to by the locals as Americanos. With the assistance of the Americanos, the locals started doing body surfing. At that time, they do not have boards to use yet. Over time, they discovered surfing by using pieces of wood, which they would call table back then. They would also use pieces of styrofoam, which they refer to as pasirit. In the year 1972, Steve Scott, a surfer who was born, then staying at the naval base in Subic, Zambales, discovered the shores of Balear and started surfing activities in Sabang Beach. Following the stint of Mr. Scott, Groups of foreigners came and visited Balear in 1975 to check in the beach was suitable for surfing. Even without the help of the internet or social media for the past years, Balear managed to catch the attention of the international movie scene in 1976. Balear became the main shooting location of an international war movie entitled Apocalypse Now. The movie was filmed in Charlie's Point, a now popular resort along Sabang Beach. After the production ended, the movie crew left the surfing boards they used for the film in Balear. Since the locals have already developed a love for surfing, they used the, surf, they used the said surfboards and began to form local surfing activities in that area. Due to the rising curiosity of what now new surfing destination was discovered, two surfers from Surfer Magazine went to Balear in search for a place to conduct a surfing competition in 1977. In 1983, Leo Unas, a Hawaiian who was born to a Filipino mother and a Japanese father, and his partner came stayed boarding house near Labasin Beach, bringing him four pieces of surfboards, which he lent free of charge to the locals. Raul Tolentino, who is present now via Zoom, name came to first followed by Rick Dulay and others. From time to time, different foreigners come to surf in this place. The passion for the sport never left the locals of Valer, and so surfing communities were formed in the municipality. These local groups were later on noticed international surfing organizations, and in so, August of 1983, the Philippine-USA Surfing Cultural Exchange officially established in Balear the NSSA Philippine and Intercostalistic Surfing Competition for the Republic of the Philippines. The National Scholastic Surfing Association arrived for the Philippine-USA Surf Exchange, where Leo Unas became in contact with them, gathered the local boys, Several participants from the first batch of Aurora National Science High School, headed by then Lysander Carrera, who is present uh, right now as now the counselor of Balear, and his male classmates joined the competition. Participants from Mount Carmel College and the boys from Roberto Zubia Elementary School, where the late Edmund Django Mendoza came from, were also enticed the part of this historical surfing competition. It must also be noticed that even before the NSSA, Raul Talentino and his colleagues were already into surfing. They allowed borrow surfboards from Leo Unas every day and surf the Sabang Beach. Although NSSA's project and pledge to donating 50 boards from the USA did not push through, in that same year, 
the National Scholastic Surfing Association was established in Baler. The community continued to grow, which they called Baler Surfing Association, and is now called Aurora Surf Riders Association. Up until today, from then on, Baler has been continuously recognized as the prime surfing tourist destination. Articles from newspapers dating back to July 13 of 1988 featured Baler as the new wave zone. The first local competition in the province was held in Ocean View, and now famously known as Basin, from 1987 to 1988, the first invitational competition was held in Baler, Action Asia 19, in 1997, organized by Vanji Palacios and Mr. Olin Duaso, sponsored then by Maui and Sons. The event were participated by surfers from Daet and Baler, where Edmund Django Mendoza won that competition. With the help of initiative from the young local surfers, other local surfers were initiated from the ASRAI, where thereafter established. Up until today, it is being recognized and respected as the only surf community in Baler because of the rising popularity of Baler as a surfing destination and the recognition of its local surfers by various communities. The surfers of Baler were invited in Nippon La Union during 1986 to 1989. These efforts, which are continued to be the state, only entitle the municipality of Baler to be declared as the birthplace of Philippine surfing and eco-tourism destination. And Mr. Chair, and to the uh, uh, guests uh, that are uh, present today, uh, the title hence the birthplace of Philippine surfing. Alam po ninyo, it is a, uh, a uh, to others, uh, ang pinupunto lang po ng ating, ating legislation na ito, uh, it was given a fact that it's impossible for uh, us, even the DOT, I think, has no official record kung kailan po nag ang surfing sa Pilipinas. But what we are holding right now is that the, the first Philippine team on the 1986 competition, which was handpicked by the DOT during that time was composed of three Baler boys. Then the succeeding year, 1987, again, the Philippine team, again, which was chosen by DOT by that time, was again composed of seven people, all from Baler boys. And another succeeding year, ganun po ang nangyari. So uh, just representation seeks uh, this proposed legislation to be uh, considered, Mr. Chair. Yun lang po, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for a very comprehensive uh history and, and sponsorship remarks. Salamat, uh, Congressman Romel. Uh, and of course, I filed a counterpart, so we'll just adopt the explanatory note of the sponsorship remarks, Kongsek. And uh, a full disclosure, of course, uh, my father put up a resort there, so we stand to be beneficiaries of this bill, uh, just uh, by way of disclosure. Um, we have also Senate Bill 238. This is filed by Senate President Pro Tem Legarda. This is the northern, this bill is seeks to declare the northern Antique protected seascape and landscape located in the municipalities of Libertad, Pandan, Sebaste, Colasi, and Tibiao in the province of Antique as a responsible community based ecotourism zone. Uh, maybe we just uh, read it to the record the explanatory note of the bill as the sponsorship speech. Uh, I'll sponsor it on behalf of uh, uh, Senate President Pro Tem Legarda. Uh, note also that, uh, Your Honours, that uh, there was a version of this measure filed in the previous Congress by Senate President Zubiri. So with the permission of uh, my colleagues and the body, we'll uh, adopt the, the deliberations uh, from, that, uh, from the previous Congress, uh, which is our practice in uh, the case of refiled bills. So if there's no objection, we'll, uh, we'll adopt those. Uh, proceedings as a part of the uh, history or the uh, debates on this uh, uh, bill to be taken into account when we finalize the committee report. Of course, subject to the approval of our chair, committee chair, Senator Nancy Binay. So we'll suspend again on uh, the bill on uh, Baler, uh, having heard the sponsorship remarks of Congress Balangar, and go back to hear the uh, the comments of our resource persons on the Pagasa Island Ecotourism Bill. Uh, any other comment, uh, Congressman Jani Pimentel, before we give it to the body? I have no further comment, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. So now we'll uh, give it to our resource persons uh, for uh, House Bill 6228 and Senate Bill 1166. May we hear from Kalayan Mayor Roberto Del Mundo? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Bo, sa ating lahat. 
Ang tagumaga po. Uh, kagalang, uh, nagagalak po ako at uh, naimbita ko dito sa uh, committee hearing. At uh, natutuwa po ang aming mga mamamayan at nakarating po yung inyong punong bayan dito sa Senate. At uh, kami po naman ay natutuwa rin at uh, nabigyan ng concern yung aming uh, pag-asailan. Yung aming bayan, malayo mo po siya at uh, kami po ay nasisihan din. At nandito po kami sa kapulungan ito. Meron po kaming comment doon sa mga isla. Na... At yan po ipapaliwanag ng aming municipal uh, tourism officer regarding po doon sa comment na napasama po doon sa protected areas na ecotourism. Ibibigay po namin sa aking uh, municipal uh, tourism officer si Ken Opanda po. Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, please uh, go ahead uh, sa municipal officer. Just please identify yourself for the record. Oh. Uh, good morning po, uh, ladies, honorable uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ken Hopanda po, the municipal tourism officer of the municipality of Kalayaan. Uh, if you allow po, we have uh, some uh, minor comments uh, regarding the proposed uh, bill po. Uh, but uh, before that, we would like to recognize po uh, Representative Pimentel. Maraming salamat po for initiating uh, the bill uh, that promotes the sports fishing uh, tourism in Kalayaan because it is really in line with uh, the initiatives of our local tourism office. So maraming salamat po. Uh, regarding the declaration po of uh, uh, Pag-asa and uh, uh, some other islands in the cluster, uh, we would like to raise po uh, in this body that uh, two other islands, uh, namely Lawak po and Likas Islands, are uh, significant ecological, uh, has significant ecological uh, resources po. Lawak Island is a known habitat for migratory birds and uh, uh, was recently declared is as a protected area by the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development. And the uh, Likas Island is, uh, on the other hand, is uh, a uh, known sanctuary for marine sea turtles. So it would be a uh, valuable addition if we could include po this uh, two other islands in the bill. And uh, also, uh, on the composition of the governing board, we would like to request po for uh, the uh, inclusion, although uh, the Honorable Mayor of Kalayaan was already included as a member, we would like to request po that the Honorable Mayor be included as a co-chairperson of the board so that uh, we, we think that this will, be, this will help in the efficient uh, ground level implementation of uh, of this initiative po. Uh, yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Thank you uh, to our municipal uh, tourism officer. Uh, balik, balikan naan si Mayor. Mayor, are you done with your remarks before we move on to other... Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Robert Chairman, uh, yun lang po ang uh, comment namin. Yung uh, comment ni tourism officer. Salamat uh, po, Mayor. Po. Thank you. We will take those into account. Can we hear from Palawan, our Palawan board members? Board, board member Maminta, are you here? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. My uh, senior blood in the fraternity, Senator Sani Angara. Uh, to the honorable members of the uh, Senate Committee on Tourism and Subcommittee on uh, uh, Related Bills under the chairmanship of Senator Sani Angara, uh, on behalf of the provincial government of Palawan, under the leadership of Governor Dennis M. Socrates, uh, we convey our uh, sincere appreciation to the members of the subcommittee for inviting us to, the, to this important public hearing to gauge our sentiment and viewpoint on the uh, legislative measures which were both authored by Senator Sani Angara and that of House Bill 6228 by uh, uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel. The uh, provincial government of Palawan recognizes the transcendental importance of the said measures, which put 
premium on tourism as an integral component of national socioeconomic development. With its rich and diverse natural seascapes and landscape, Palawan has drawn the attention of tourists, both domestic and foreign, which makes it one of the main tourist destinations in the world. Over the past years, several international travel and leisure organizations have also recognized the uh, unsullied beauty of Palawan and hailed it as the uh, world's best and friendliest island. While tourism has become the lifeblood of our e local economy, there are only a few municipalities that reap its benefit, and most of which are situated in northern Palawan due to their crystal clear waters, white sand beaches, and karst formations. But little do Filipinos know that Palawan has so much more to offer with its tourism, one of which is Pagasa Island in the municipality of Clayan. Pagasa Island is the largest in the Pagasa Island cluster that is effectively occupied by the Philippines and the second largest island in the entire Kalayaan Island group in the West Philippine Sea. It is one of the uh, 23 municipalities under the jurisdiction of Palawan and classified as a six-class six municipality. Despite its considerable distance from mainland, Palawan, Kalayaan is endowed with rich and diverse natural resources, especially its marine ecosystems, thus making it an excellent diving environment and fishing ground. While the tourism industry of Kalayaan may not be at par with other municipalities in Palawan, it has been a common site for various international and local media outfits doing documentaries on the lives of people living in the disputed area in its unblemished natural wonders. And uh, in, in order to uh, uh, make a sound judgment on whether or not to support Senate Bill 1166, it is important to uh, determine the advantages as well as the dangers of enacting the said bill. We in the provincial government of Palawan see the following as the advantages of declaring Pagasa Island Cluster as a special ecological tourism zone. Number one, the influx of local and foreign tourists will increase the revenue of the municipality of Kalayaan and the provincial government of Palawan. Number two, it will likewise create jobs and opportunities for the local community residing in Pagasa Island. Number three, it will become a means of promoting the province of Palawan to the international community, as it gives us the chance to showcase our culture and other tourist destinations in the province. And it will strengthen our claim over the West Philippine Sea, although it had already been declared that the Philippines is titled to the WPS, it is of no secret that the People's Republic of China is occupying islands therein and continuously harassing our fishermen and coast guard. By making it a special ecological tourism zone, the Philippines essentially sends a message to other nations that we intend to keep the WPS as part of our jurisdiction. There's no question that there are indeed advantages in declaring Pagasa Island Cluster as a special ecological tourism zone. However, we cannot turn a blind eye to the dangers that it may pose. We have also listed the possible dangers. Number one, environmental damage. Undoubtedly, tourism has an impact in our environment. If it is not managed properly, such as the waste in, man such as in waste management aspect, it can lead to the degradation of Pagasa Island cluster. We should also note that there are species of bir birds that are endemic in the area. If their natural habitat is dis disturbed, there is possibility that, may, that they may live the same. And the uh, security of tourists, as is stated above, the Pagasa Island cluster is within the West Philippine Sea. We are of the opinion that the continuous patrolling of Chinese Coast Guard vessels in the WPS runs the risk of coming across one of the Philippine tourist, two tourist vessels, which might result in another harassment by China to the Philippines. Moreover, the, there's a great distance between the islands of Pagasa Island cluster. And there are almost no residents in the area. The risk of coming across pirates is also present. In view of the above-mentioned possible dangers, we respectfully submit and recommend to, the, to conduct the following before enacting Senate Bill 1166 to wit. Number one, the Pagasa Island Cluster Eco Ecotourism Cluster Governing Board should conduct an inventory of possible ecotourism sites for the purpose of planning and managing of recreation and ecotourism resources. 
ensure sustainability of the project by limiting the number of tourists allowed in the area. This may help maintain the integrity and vitality of the site so that it can continue to draw to tourists for years to come. Moreover, the renewable resources of energy such as solar, wind, or water are abundant in Pag-asa Island Cluster. Utilization of this will cause less strain to the environment. It is likewise recommended that tourist facilities should be constructed on areas less disturbing to animal species living in the area to minimize deleterious environmental impacts. Next is to maximize local economic benefits. Revenue retention may be ensured by regulating foreign investment and by encouraging local investment and employment in lodging, guide services, and other ventures. In preparing the ecotourism master plan, the uh, mayor of the municipality of Kalayaan must be included and should also should have an active participation. He is deemed to be more knowledgeable and familiar in Pagasa Island cluster. Hence, he should be capable in pointing out to the board which areas, if occupied, are less detrimental to existing living things in the area. As for security, the Naval Forces West must be included in determining the route that the tourist vessel may navigate. And if possible, the areas that the tourists may be allowed is near existing Naval Forces West stations. Next is the inclusion of Palawan Council for Sustainable Development as created by ECP law, uh, governing the uh, uh, sustainable uh, environment. Board member Ryan, Palawan. may we, we have a limited time available to us and several resource persons. So may we just ask you to give an overview of your... Uh, position paper subject to, and we will take into account your uh, detailed uh, submissions, pero maybe just an overview. And if we can ask our all our resource persons to limit their interventions to five to seven minutes so we can hear from everybody. Uh, pasensya na po. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. All in all, we, we at the provincial government of Palawan are very supportive of the proposal to declare Pagasa Island Cluster as an ecotourism destination and protected area. Pursuant to Senate Bill 1166, and that of a uh, House bill proposed by uh, uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel, as it would, be, it would bring a big uh, step towards uh, bringing potential of the island as tourism destination, while, while also ensuring protection and conservation. And this legislative measure is also in harmony with the trust of the provincial government of Palawan to strengthen our tourism industry explore areas with potential for ecotourism investment. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Board Member uh, Maminta. We also have uh, with us uh, Board Member Arzaga. Uh, any comments, sir? Again, uh, we'll ask you to just give your general comments uh, subject to the submission uh, yes, of the detailed yes. uh, position paper, which we the committee will consider in the drafting of the uh, recommendations for the committee report. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Marami po salamat. Salamat po sa pagkakataon. Uh, I, for one, I go for the uh, stand of the provincial government, as read by Board Member Ryan Maminta. But uh, I would like to thank also Congressman John Fimentel for coming up with this uh, proposal. Uh, some 40 years ago, or more than 40 years ago, President, then President Marcos has annexed uh, Kalayaan as part of the province of Palawan. And this, uh, this uh, bill would... Uh, with uh, strongly demonstrate and assert our sovereignty by uh, coming up with this kind of economy in the said uh, part of Kalayan. So I really uh, uh, support and uh, thank you for 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 this bill and for this act. And it just in case this would strengthen our claim and assertion of sovereignty over the contested island, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Board Member Arzaga. Can we now hear from DNR USEC Augusto de la Peña, who's with us uh, online, or any comments on the bill on Pagasa? The bills on Pagasa. USEC uh, de la Peña? Well, uh, maybe we can return to him later. Uh, can we hear from Director Levita Lagrada from the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development? Ayana see Yusek. Uh, Yusek, are you ready to give your position, sir? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and apologies for that uh, technical problem, small technical problem. 
First of all, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much uh, for inviting us in this uh, subcommittee meeting on uh, Senate Committee on Tourism to express the DNR's views on, uh, especially on Senate Bill Number Eleven Six Six, declaring Pagasa Islands cluster as an eco tourism zone and protected areas. First of all, uh, we would like to express our our position that we support this bill and uh, interposes no objection to the declaration of Pagasa Island Cluster as an eco tourism zone. However, we would like to emphasize the need for supporting infrastructures and resources in order to ensure peace and order, safety and security of civilians and civilian activities to be conducted unhampered and with safety. We also like to express our, our view that any area-based biodiversity or environmental conservation measures over the features in the Kalayan Island Group must undertake an ecosystems-based approach and not just political or administrative in its determination. Um, Mr. Chair, we have uh, the department through its Biodiversity Management uh, Bureau has submitted to the Secretariat uh, the, the department's position paper, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek de la Peña. Appreciate that. Uh, can we hear from... Uh, uh, DNR Ms. Director Reneo Vicente, Senior Ecosystem Management Specialist, National Parks Division. Are you here, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, generally, we support the enactment of uh, House Bill, uh, Senate Bill Number 1166, declaring the Pagas Island and surrounding islands as an ecotourism area and at the same time a protected area under the National Integrated Protected Area System. In fact, the DNR, through the Biodiversity Management Bureau, uh, is already working for the establishment of the area as a protected area. And uh, matter of fact, we have already conducted initial uh, protected area suitability analysis, which is a standard step number one in the establishment of uh, protected areas. And uh, we would also like to add that uh, uh, on top of the need to conduct or complete the protected area suitability analysis, we further recommend to uh, ascertain the technical description of the protected of, of the proposed area, since uh, we have already heard that there are areas or marine areas, specifically the, the marine areas, which are habitat of uh, a weekend and other important uh, wildlife, and uh, we would like to. Uh, take this opportunity or we would not want to waste the opportunity to include the marine areas in the area to be declared as a protected area and ecotourism uh, area. And for that, we would need a technical uh, uh, competency or technical uh, assessment of the area for us to come up with the uh, boundaries and meet and bounds of those areas with which are resource rich for uh, biodiversity conservation as, and as well as uh, significant for the ecotourism development of the area. And uh, another story is uh, we would like to re recommend to include the DNR as uh, one of the co-chair of the governing board, if not as a uh, chair, as is standard in other uh, ecotourism areas under the National Integrated Protected Areas. We have uh, detailed the comments here, and we will just provide this uh, copy to the Secretariat for your reference. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Director Vicente. Uh, who will conduct that uh, study of to, for the delineation of the meets and bounds? Kayo ho Bayan? Which, which, uh, which bureau or... Uh, or uh, Office of the DNR will do that. Uh, actually, it's the regional office that uh, usually conducts the protected area suitability analysis with the technical assistance of uh, the, the bureau, or if necessary, sir. Okay. So can we commence that already? So by the time this bill uh, goes through the legislative mill, uh, na finalize na yung meets and bounds uh, in the final version of the measure. So we'll seek your help on that, uh, Director. Uh, can we hear from Director, Regional Director Rose Malu, Carla Rose, Attorney Carla Rose Malupeng of Region 4B? 
Director. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. I am Attorney Carla Rose R. Maluping, uh, Legal Division. And on behalf of our Regional Executive Director, uh, Lormeline Claudio, we have no objection over the said bill on Pag-asa Island, and we enjoin with the position of the BMB on their recommendations that the said bill should be aligned with the provisions of the NIPAS Act and that peace, order, safety, and security of the civilians must also be considered. Uh, regarding the meets and bounds, Your Honor, we will conduct the said assessment together with the BMB. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Salamat po, Attorney. Can we hear from uh, PCSD Director Lagrada? Ma'am, go ahead, please. Uh, good morning to all the members of this committee. And with the permission of the USEC de la Peña, I'd just like to give the comments of uh, the PCSDS on behalf of our acting executive director. I uh, just would like to give our support to the proposed bill because uh, it will ensure the socioeconomic development of the area and uh, the, the, Palau, the, the province in general. But we just would like to request if, uh, uh, just like what the board Maminta mentioned, the inclusion of the PCSD to the governing board to be created, as well as we'd like to uh, also would like to request if a certain provision can be, uh, can be included in the proposed bill that will uh, ensure that all the programs or will be aligned with the SEP framework for, for Palawan. So yes, these point. are good good suggestions. Salamat po, Director. Uh, can we now hear from the DOT? ASEC Christopher Morales is with us online. ASEC Morales. ASEC Morales. I will return to ASEC Morales. Uh, DOT Chief Tourism Operations Officer, Attorney Gliza Sarmiento, are you with us? Attorney Gliza. Maybe we can ask the ComSec to alert the resource persons that they're about to be called so they can be ready when they are called. Yes, uh, sir. How about, uh, yes, who is this? Who is speaking? Oh. Yeah, DOT. Uh, can you please identify yourself, ma'am? Naka, yeah. Opo. Uh, good morning, honor Honorable Chair. I am the yes. new regional director uh, of DOT Memaropa. I am Azuzena Padilla. Hey, good morning, uh, Director Padilla. Please, uh, any comments on the bill? Yeah, so the Department of Tourism Memaropa region interposes no objection and manifests its full support to SBN 1166 entitled An Act of de Declaring Pag-asa Island Cluster in the Municipality of Calayaan Province of Palawan as an eco-tourism destination and protected area, providing funds thereof and for other purposes. Uh, thank you for introducing this, Honorable Chair, and co-authored by Honorable Congressman uh, Johnny Pimentel. So the municipality has continuously uh, crafted its local tourism code and revised its local tourism plan. So there are scheduled activities in the municipality the great, such as the Great Kalayaan Expedition 2023, is by the Wild Expedition Palawan Municipal Government of Kalayaan, Provincial Government of Palawan, Philippine Coast Guard, Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, and Civil Society Organization, which we are also supporting. So that the organizers will conduct a familiarization trip by boarding a leave aboard boat scheduled for March 2023 covering the islands of Lawak, Patag, and Pag-asa Islands. So an interagency Kalayaan project kickoff trip will be on March 2023 also via a Cessna plane. It will be conducted with 14 other agencies, uh, DILG, DO, DOJ, DSWD, DTI, DEPED, DOH, DOE, DA, TESDA, DOT, DNR, DPWH, NEDA, and DICT. So we appreciate being included in the proposed Pag-asa Island Ecotourism Cluster Governing Board as co-vice chairperson. However, we also suggest that the regional line agencies of DPWH, DTI, 
EOST, MGB, and EMB be included in the board. Similarly, the budgetary requirements during the implementation of the PPAs that will be identified in the master plan should be under the agencies whose mandate cover the PPAs. So the, considering the matters as stated, the Department of Tourism Memaropa region concurs that the declarations aligned with the program of this department and hereby recommends SBN 1166 be enacted to ensure, ensure sustainable tourism development in Kalayaan, Palawan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director. Uh, we will now hear from the Tieza Legal Department, Attorney Austria, Rochelle mm -hmm. Austria. Hello, um, good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, members of morning. the yes. committee, and at the same time, uh, to everyone present. Um, uh, sir, may I make a manis uh, manifestation that uh, we have uh, prepared our initial comments. However, um, it's still subject to the approval of our um, COO. Uh, nonetheless, we would uh, submit the final version as long as it's already approved. Uh, but let's assure that we fully support the bill. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney uh, Austria. Can we hear from uh, NHCP Chairperson Dr. Emmanuel Calairo? Dr. Calairo, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, good morning everyone. Uh, may we present to this honorable body our um, comment re relative to the Senate Bill Number 1615 and uh, uh, 5961. Well, the, the NCP recognizes the surfing community in Baler and how this has become a part of the culture of the municipality. I, uh, Director, we're, we're tackling the Pagasa measure first. Uh, we'll, we'll recognize you later for the... Or okay. the Baler uh, measure. Any comments on the Pagasa measures? Oh, sorry, Mr. Chair, we don't have any comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll get back to you, sir, on the you know, on the Baler bill. Thank you. Uh, Neda Director Ganapin, any comments, sir? Good morning, uh, Your Honor, and to the uh, members of the committee. Uh, sir, for the, the info available to us indicates that the productivity area sustainability assessment and public consultations for this proposed uh, protected area have, re have already been completed. And our colleagues from the DNR uh, may confirm this. So with that, Your Honor, there is merit in pursuing the approval of this measure in the well, for, uh, in, here in the 19th Congress. The ecological significance of the Kalayaan group, Island Group is recognized, including its importance in ensuring the country's territorial integrity, and this measure could provide an additional basis to expand the country's uh, maritime presence uh, in the area and reinforce our environmental laws to prevent poaching and other destructive uh, activities, uh, Your Honor. Um, with that, Your Honor, we end our uh, manifestation and we will provide our official comments, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Director Ganapin. Can we hear from uh, DILG, Attorney Gino Lavarias? Attorney Lavarias. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Uh, the DILG interposed no objection to the subject measure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Lavarias. DPWH, may we hear from you? Dr. Rosemary Del Rosario, Division Chief for Environmental and Social Safeguards Thank Division Planning Service. Ma'am? Thank Dr. you, Mr. Rosemary Chair. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the honorable members of the committee, uh, in behalf of the DPWH, we would like to express our full support for the passage or for the enactment of the proposed legislative me uh, measures. Uh, in the interest of time, Mr. Chair, and to the members of the committee, we would like also to inform the committee that we will, be, we will forward to the committee our position paper. Uh, in, uh, actually, these are not comments, but rather an inputs for consideration in the finalization of the proposed bills as soon as it will be signed by our principals. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Director. Can we now hear from uh, Tourism Promotions Board, Mr. Cesar Villanueva, the OIC of the Domestic Promotions Department. Mr. Villanueva, the Tourism Promotions Board. Are you with us, sir? Yeah, good. Um... Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the TPG is uh, 
bound to uh, fully support uh, the uh, proposed bill. Thank you. Thank you. So, National Parks Development Committee, NPDC Executive Director, Ms. Ceci Lorenzana Romero. Ma'am, any comment po on the Pagasa bill? Bills, rather. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Um, for the Pagasa bill, we post no... Um, um, it can best be implemented by the TIESA, and NPDC is more than willing to assist in the implementation of the... Um, of this as long as it's in line with the EO of our agency. So we fully support this bill. Okay. Salamat, uh, Director yeah. Romero. Uh, can we now hear from... I think that's... Uh, any. Did I miss out any resource persons for the Pagasa bills, uh, Comsec Bernardine? Um, sir, none. That would be all for the Pagasa bills. Okay, so if we can, uh, as earlier, the committee adopted the uh, uh, deliberations on the in the previous Congress on these bills, and we will now refer the bill to a technical working group for final uh, consolidation of all the comments of the authors, uh, the sponsors, and the resource persons and stakeholders uh, to come up with a consolidated measure. We thank. Uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel, uh, um, Mayor Del Mundo, Board Members Paminta and Arzaga, as well as our uh, um, department uh, officials for their presence here this morning. And they will suspend consideration of this measure and refer it to a technical working group for uh, final preparation, uh, further deliberation and final preparation of the committee report. Thank you, uh, Your Honors. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, this is Comsec. Uh, the president of Filtoa, Ms. Fe Abling, you would like to comment on the Pag-asa bill? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's, we, you have the floor, ma'am. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. On behalf of our um, association, the Philippine Tour Operators Association, uh, we interpose no objection to such uh, SB bill number 1166. However, we would like to mention lang po in the crafting, in the final crafting of the bill, uh, to please not to forget the carrying capacity of the place, because that is very important, considering that the environmental aspects of the destination is very much present in the area. Um, we might, you know, uh, be needing a lot of tourists, but, you know, we have to uh, ensure also the you know the carrying capacity so that the the, the place will not be disturbed especially the marine um, um, presence in the in the environment second uh while we are not in uh you know we are fully supporting this because the philippine tour operators association in cooperation with the department of tourism is very much uh into um Emerging destinations. We are opening emerging destinations. We are, you know, uh, fully discovering emerging destinations that we can add up to our inventory of, you know, destinations in the country. That's all, Mr. Chair, and maraming salamat po. Salamat po, ma'am. Uh, any other comments on the, on the Pagasa bills before we suspend consideration of these bills from the body? Kung wala na po, eh, we we'll, uh, refer to our earlier motion to or direction to refer it to a technical working group. Thank you again to our resource persons uh, and authors. Uh, now we'll open consideration of the, go back to the bills on uh, Balear and, and uh, as, the, as the surfing capital. Uh, we've heard earlier from our sponsor, Congressman Rommel. May we hear from some of the officials of Balear and the other stakeholders? Uh, Mayor Red Tangar is with us. Mayor Red, any comments, sir? Um, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, po sa ating lahat. Uh, we all know po Baler is the ang one of the basic sources po ng income ng Baler is uh, tourism. So with this bill, uh, luck, uh, hopefully, talagang malaking tulong sa amin kasi uh, tourism boom started in Baler way back I think 2013 when Senator Ed Angara brought in Chris Aquino. That was 2013. Nagbago po ang pamumuhay ng aking mga kababayan because of tourism. Nagtayo po ang hotels, 
restaurants, etc. So, nagkaroon po ng chance makapaghanap po yung mga tiga baler. With the passing of this bill, hopefully po mapasa. Uh, for sure, uh, kasi nowadays po, when you want to go to a certain place, you, you Google it, di ba? You Google it. Eh. So, for example, when you uh, Google surfing, uh, if we make baler the birthplace of Philippine surfing, for sure, once you Google it, uh, lalabas agad yung bayan ng baler. So, this can become a very big marketing tool for us. So, so we can invite tourists or local and tourists uh, alike to visit Baler. So, this will be very be beneficial para po sa bahay ng Baler. Yun lamang po. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Rhett. I think we have uh, Board Member Jake Calvan with us also. Any comment, uh, Board Member? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning to everyone in this August body. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to express my gratitude to... Uh, the authors of uh, these bills, Senator Sani Angara and uh, Representative Romel Angara. Uh, the provincial government of Aurora would like to express our full support for the enactment of these uh, bills because as mentioned by uh, Mayor Rhett Angara earlier that uh, the province of Aurora and the municipality of Belair are very much reliant uh, in tourism. And as a national tax allocation reliant uh, province, we believe uh, that the passage of these bills will definitely help us in promoting the province of Aurora and the municipality of Belair and uh, increasing revenue through tourist activities in the province of Aurora. And uh, just to share that the province of Aurora uh, just passed the Tourism Code of 2021, it's the first ever Tourism Code of uh, the province. And uh, we have very much allotted a lot of uh, sections in our Tourism Code, allotting, uh, focusing on uh, surfing activities in the province. Uh, therefore, uh, this is very much aligned with the uh, projects and programs of the municipality of Belair and the province of Aurora for us to be able to increase revenue through tourism activities. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Galvan. Can we hear from the DNR, uh, Yusek de la Peña? Thank you again, Honorable Chair, for uh, recognizing the department and expressing our full support uh, for the passage of the bill, which is anchored on the state policy to promote tourism as an ecologically sustainable, responsible, participative and culturally sensitive, economically viable, and equitably beneficial to local communities. The passage of the bill is consistent with the status of the Aurora Watershed Forest Reserve and the Balo, Pingit, Sabadi, Malaya, the Watershed Forest Reserve that are within the municipalities of Baler and, and, and as an initial component of the NIPAS, having been declared as Watershed Forest Reserves to Proclamation 34, Series 1936, and Proclamation Number 908, Series of 1992. In addition, the Aurora Memorial Park is being proposed for expansion to cover parts of the Valer. Of Valer. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, we have, uh, through the BNB, also uh, submitted the department's position paper, but just to emphasize that the DNR, through the PENRO and CENRO, as the primary agency responsible for the conservation, management, development, and proper use of the country's environment and natural resources, should be involved in stages of ecotourism development from planning to implementation, including the preparation of the IRR of this proposed act, to ensure, to ensure that environmental policies and guidelines are complied with. With that, Mr. Chair, we end our management stage on uh, Thank you, Yusek uh, De La Peña. Uh, we'll next hear from uh, uh, the DOT, uh, ASEC, uh, who is present for the DOT, Bernardine. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have Mr. Christian Lingat uh, from the DOT Region 3. Uh, okay. Go, go ahead, uh, Director Lingat. Uh, Director Lingat online. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, pardon if we can we can have uh, the camera on, but uh, ne nevertheless, the DOT Region Three fully supports and interposes no objection to Senate Bill One Six One Five, recognizing the municipality of Baler in the province of Aurora as a birthplace of Philippine surfing. So the said bill will be an added value 
in highlighting the significance of Aurora, specifically Baler, in Philippine surfing history and its role to further promote both surfing and other tourism uh, product offerings to local and foreign tourists, thereby increasing uh, tourist receipts, a tourist length of stay, and to encourage more tourism investments in Aurora. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Lingap. I uh, will be we'll jump uh, to the private sector and uh, we'll do interchange uh, between public and private sector too. They've been waiting a long time. I see my friend uh, Jun Uban online. Maybe we can recognize him already, sir. Uh, Mr. Uban is uh, responsible for bringing in a lot of Philippine films uh, uh, to the country. So uh, I'll give you the floor, uh, Jun. Thank you for being present. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there. I'm, I'm not in the Philippines at the moment. But it is very true that the, the Baler, after an exhaustive um, location scout using helicopters, uh, finding out from people who were aware of uh, the, the sport of surfing, uh, we went to all the other provinces. It was Baler wherein we were able to find the very much important location for the ride of the Valkyrie scene. Because it, it wasn't just the surf, of course, it was also the beauty of the, the beauty of the spot. Uh, I'd like to thank, I, I, I've given some photos to the Secretariat, and I'd like to thank primarily the people of Baler when you were there, that was 1976-77. It was no joke hosting hundreds of foreigners using a schoolhouse as, a, as, a, as quarters, and we only had one, one, one telephone line, and the Armed Forces of the Philippines was using the COMEL, communication electronics, using Morse code to communicate with Makati. So it was, it was really, it was really. Uh, I was physically present. Yet I was 15 years old, 50 pounds ago. Uh, I took <laughs> Air Force pilots. It would not have been possible again, not just for the beauty, but because of the support of Baler. So I'm, I'm very happy to note that uh, we were an integral part of that, and uh, Baler is being recognized for what it is rightly so, the birthplace of uh, surfing. The film, that's the main story. The main reason why Colonel Kilgore, if you're familiar with the movie, attacked the village was to get, to be able to have his surfing boys surf in the area. That was the <laughs> long and short of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Colonel Kilgore is uh, Robert Duval, no? Robert Duval. Uh, uh, having been able to do it in Baler. Maraming salamat po, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, piece of movie history. Of course, uh, that... Uh, Surfing scene is one of the most famous scenes in uh, uh, iconic scenes in uh, movie history uh, from Apocalypse Now. Thank you for that account, uh, first person uh, eyewitness account, uh, June. Salamat. And of course, June is also responsible for bringing in other films like uh, to the country, like Born Legacy, among others. Tamaba, June. Yes, sir. Well, at the moment, yeah. we have been busy doing Survivor. We're doing Survivor uh, Canada in, in, uh, in Bicol, no? In Bicol. Um, we've been filming Survivor. We about 15 countries use the Philippines as their main location for the Survivor series. And we've been doing that for the past 15 years. And we have, we have, we have other, we have other uh, new shows that uh, are being done in other parts. Thank you. And thank you for your efforts, uh, sir. Uh, can we now hear from uh, NHCP uh, Chairperson Dr. Kalairo, sir? Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Paul. The uh, NHCP uh, recognizes the surfing community in Baler and how this has become a part of the culture of the municipality. However, please be informed that uh, this is beyond the purview of NHCP. Instead, uh, we recommend getting in touch with the Department of Tourism and the National Commission for Culture and the Arts for they have more information regarding this matter. Nonetheless, we reiterate our recognition of the surfing community and culture in Barrel Aurora. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Kalairo. Can we hear from uh, NEDA, Director Ganapin? Uh, Director Ganapin. Morning. Yes, sir. Good morning again, uh, Your Honor. Morning, sir. Um, on the Senate Bill 11, um, 596, uh, Senate Bill 1615 and House Bill 5961. Uh, I think, sir, we have no, um, uh, we interpose no objection on this. Uh, I think this recognition through the proposed bill will enhance Baler's uh, attractiveness as a 
a prime tourist destination, including hosting of international events, and as, as mentioned earlier. And uh, also, uh, Your Honor, uh, we take note that the, the historical accounts that was mentioned earlier by our Honorable uh, uh, Congressman here uh, will, uh, uh, will, will further enhance the argument for the passage of, of, of this bill, Your Honor. Just a, a minor um, comment lang with regards on the uh, statement that uh, uh, Balder should be prioritized and supported. Um, uh, uh, we, we would ju just like to note here that there, all, all, there are also other uh, areas uh, in the country that may also need to be to be promoted. Um, your Honor, like La Union and Chergao. So and uh, so that's that's all our comment, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, yes, definitely. No, this uh, bill is not uh, will not detract from uh, should not detract from the promotions of our other surfing destinations, as you mentioned, La Union, Chargao. Andiyan din po yung Daet, uh, Pagod Pud is also a surfing destination, Karamoan in uh, Eastern Samar, uh, Lanusa in Surigao also. Uh, these are some of our, uh, I'm sure I'm missing out uh, a couple more, but uh, Sambales also has a thriving uh, surf community aside from uh, the places. So, circuit yan eh. So, I think, uh, and because uh, surfing is seasonal, uh, it's inevitable na hindi mo talaga it, hindi masolo talaga ng isang destination ang uh, ang surfing uh, tourism because uh, because the waves are seasonal so pag uh, lilipat talaga yung mga surfers depending on the time of the year so but anyway thank you for your comment uh, uh, director can we hear from the ILG attorney Gino Labarias good morning again good morning again mr chair the DILG supports the passage of the legislative measure, as this will be an affirmation of the state policy found in Section 2 of the Tourism Act. That's all, Your Honor. Uh, salamat, sir. Salamat, Attorney Labarias. From DPWH, direct Dr. Rosemary Del Rosario. Once more. Uh, Mr. Chair, as uh, I have mentioned a while ago, the DPWH fully support all the bills. And we will be uh, transmitting to the committee our uh, position, uh, not not really uh, not really comments, but inputs in order to be considered in the finalization of the said proposed bills, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Del Rosario. Uh, again, uh, we'll hear from the private sector. We have the U United Philippine Surfing Association Sec Gen Secretary General, Mr. Hill Canlas. Are you with us, uh, Mr. Canlas? Uh, yeah, I see you on screen. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Sonny Angara, Congressman Rommel, and other distinguished members of the Senate and House representatives. I would like to acknowledge Mayor Ret uh, Angara, uh, along with the OGs like Raul T of the Belair Surfing Community. Uh, if I may be allowed to read our position paper, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Go ahead, sir. The United Philippine Surfing Association is the sole recognized national sport association for the development and promotion of surfing in the Philippines. This recognition was granted by the Philippine Olympic Community and the Philippine Sports Commission through Republic Act 6847. OPSA is the National Federation for the Philippines under the International Surfing Association, recognized by the International Olympic Committee as the world governing authority for surfing. As the official NSA for surfing, OPSA is responsible for developing and promoting the sport, including identifying and training athletes, creating competition and event opportunities, and establishing rules and regulation for the sport. OPSA has been instrumental in bringing the sport of surfing to the forefront of Philippine sports, not only as a recreational activity, but as a competitive sport that has been gaining traction locally and internationally. As an organization, OPSA has been at the forefront of expanding surfing in the country and helping to create opportunities for all stakeholders, both athletes and enthusiasts alike. OPSA fully believes that Senate Bill 1615 will help promote the sport of surfing in the Philippines in the following ways. Number one, boost tourism. Belair has already established itself as a popular destination for surfers and beach enthusiasts, attracting more local and foreign visitors to experience the waves and learn about the sport's history in the country. Second, economic opportunities. With more tourists visiting Belair, local businesses will benefit from increased revenue. The tourism industry will create jobs and provide opportunities for small business owners, thus improving local economy. Three, 
increase participation in surfing. The bill would help people become aware of the sport's history, its importance in the country. This could lead to an increase in the number of people who take up the sport, which would provide UPSA with more opportunities to identify and train athletes. Number four, create more opportunities for our athletes. The bill could help lead to creation of more events, competitions, grassroots programs, which would provide athletes with more opportunities to compete, showcasing their talent and skills. This would be beneficial for OPSA as it would provide more chances for athletes to gain experience and recognition in the sport. OPSA understands the importance of recognizing the history and heritage of the sport of surfing in the Philippines. However, it's not within OPSA's purview to confirm historical claims. As the official NSA for surfing in the country, we believe that it is essential to have accurate and well-supported claims for historical events and milestones in the sport. Hence, OPSA respectfully defers to the National History uh, Historical Commission of the Philippines to establish the historical claims of Belair as the birthplace of Philippine surfing. We thank the legislators for bringing the sport of surfing to the forefront of a national conversation, as this will only help in the development of the sport. We will remain steadfast in working with the national government, local communities, and other stakeholders in promoting and developing the sport of surfing in the country. We believe that by working together, we can ensure the sport of surfing in the Philippines continues to thrive and reach new heights in the years to come. And to add to that, Mr. Chair, I would like to support the emphasis of Congressman Romel Angara on the tourism and the economic impact of uh, surfing in Balear, Aurora. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Canlas. Uh, can we hear from uh, the Tourism Promotions Board, uh, Mr. Villanueva, from the promotions, the OIC of the Promotions Department? Yeah, good Your morning. Day. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pardon for call. not uh, having my uh, camera on because it's some technical problem. Um, the Tourism Promotions Board, uh, we interpose no objection on, and fully support on the passage of the bill. And uh, rest assured that uh, the Tourism Promotion Board, as the marketing arm of the Department of Tourism, um, uh, it will always support and uh, it will include uh, the promotion of this area of the Valor as a, uh, a surfing destinations to our marketing and promotional initiatives, both uh, abroad and uh, domestic, in partnership, of course, with the uh, private and public uh, stakeholders, tourism stakeholders. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Villanueva. So, uh, can we hear from the National Parks Development Committee Director Romero again? Ma'am? Okay. Hello, good morning. Morning. Okay. Um, yes. For, uh, I think for the for the passage of the Senate Bill 1615, um, for National Parks Development Committee, we cannot, uh, we don't have the capacity to determine the birthplace of surfing in the country, but we fully support this bill as it will boost tourism in the mun municipality of Balen. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director Romero. Uh, can we hear from the Aurora Surf Riders Association? And ito po si Mr. Raul Talentino at si Mr. Raymond Villapando. So I see Mr. Talentino on the screen, sir. Any comment? Uh, naka, yeah. Magandang umaga po, Your Honor. Corny po. Yeah. Uh, marami mo salam at dahil support na uh, Maaari na wa po masarang din na ito o pasado na yata pang harping uh, uh, sa Balearia. <laughs> Talaga po naman ako nagpapatutok uh, kami pa uh, na kaunang-unahan ho talaga sa Pilipinas sa ating bayan ng Balearia ang harping ay nagsimula. Which is marami nagsasabi sa ibang bayan loob of that area. But anyway, uh, sa ating pong bayan, uh, ang bayan po ng Aurora ay eight municipalities. Marami po ang potential surface pot diyan na na-discover na since the end that na hindi po namin nire-reveal kung saan-saan. Kasi po ang mga surface may sinasabing mga surface pot. And then, ang bayan po ng Baler, 
Esana, Sadarti na panon, makaroon po tayo ng malaking competition na oh, international man. Para po makakilala tayo sa buong mundo at maraming turista na po sa ating bahay. Maraming salamat po, Your Honor. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Tolentino. Uh, is Mr. Villapando here? Uh, thank uh, you po. Yes, Mr. Chair. He's physically present. Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Villapando. Go ahead, sir. Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, na ikinagagala ko pong malaman na mayroong act recognizing the municipality of Valer in the province of Aurora as the birthplace of Philippine surfing and declaring it an ecotourism destination. Uh, isa po ako sa makapagpapatunay na ang uh, surfing ay uh, nag-umpisa as early as 1969. Uh, I remember I was uh, only a third grader. May mga foreign uh, ano, uh, missionaries na po na uh, pumupunta sa Baler, may mga dalang surfboard. At uh, nakikita po namin sila na sila ay uh, nagsasurf, pero hindi po namin alam na ang tawag doon ay surfing. Ang alam po namin ay pasirit lang siya. So kaya na ginagaya po ng mga taga roon sa amin, taga Sabang, particular po. Dahil kami ang madalas na nakakakita at na malamalapit kami sa aplaya, nakikita namin ng mga nagsasurfing. So, ginaya po ng mga taga roon sa amin ang uh, kanilang ginagawa. Pero ang gamit po namin ay hindi naman surfboard at wala naman po kaming uh, surfboard. Ang ginagamit lang namin, pag nakakita kami ng kapirasong uh, kahoy o kapirasong tabla, uh, yun na po ang aming ginagawa. Magpa magpapasirit na po kami papunta sa tabi ng, uh, ng, uh, uh, ng uh, aplaya. So, ganun din po ang ginagawa ng mga nangingisda habang nagpupukot po yung hinihila po yung kanilang lambat. May mga kabataan din po na sumasabay habang uh, namumukot sila, sinasabayan nila ng pagpapasirit po sa alon. Kaya uh, nagkaroon po ng interes ang mga tagaroon sa amin na talagang uh, gawin itong uh, surfing na ito na hindi namin alam na surfing talaga siya. Then, uh, as uh, mga 1972 po, mayroong uh, dumating doon na uh, certain stiviskat po from Subic. So, noong uh, nag-surf po siya doon, iniwanan niya sa isang local yung kanyang surfboard. At doon po nag-umpisa, may mga sumasakay na po sa surfboard. And then, uh, kasama na po doon na napabilang na nag-umpisa na rin yung uh, katatapos po nating magsalita si Mr. Raul Tolentino. Then, uh, May mga sumunod pa po na pangyayari na nag-boost po ng interest sa amin sa surfing dahil po nagkaroon ng uh, filming ng uh, Apocalypse Now at uh, nakita po ito in, uh, internationally na panood po. So the more na nagkaroon po ng uh, mga surfers, lalong dumami po ang mga nagkaka-interest uh, doon sa aming lugar. Then, noong 1983 po, natatandaan ko ang NSSA ay dumating po doon. At isa po ako sa kasama ni Mr. Leo Unas na nakipag-usap po sa uh, superintendent ng school para makakuha po ng mga bata na matuturuan para po doon sa surfing cultural exchange. At uh, isa nga po doon sa naging uh, uh, tinuruan namin ang uh, kasama namin po dito si Konsihal uh, Lisander Kerihero. At uh, simula po noon, lalo pong dumami at lalo nga uh, nagka-interes ang mga taga-baler. Hindi lang po yung mga taga-sabang na kundi uh, yung mga taga-kalapit barangay. Then dumami po ng dumami hanggang uh, ibang bayan na po na doon sa, sa Aurora pa rin. Kaya po yung aming uh, dating Baler Surfing Association ay nireorganize po at pinalitan na po ng uh, ASRAI. Kaya po iyon. So hanggang sa ngayon po, yung mga activities po sa surfing ay pinangungunahan po ng ASRAI. So yan lamang po at uh, maraming salamat po Mr. Chairman. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, maraming salamat uh, Mr. Villapando. Uh, can we hear also from the DNR Region 3? Uh, I think we have Assistant Regional Director Salito Blanco with us. May nakikita yes, uh, sa screen. Mr. Chair, uh, uh, magandang yeah, umaga ahead, po. As uh, expressed by our Undersecretary Augusto de la Peña previously, on behalf of uh, Region 3, headed by our Regional Director, Akito T. Moreno, 
fully support the enactment of Senate Bill 1615, recognizing Baler Aurora as the birthplace of Philippine surfing. That's all, Mr. Chair. Salamat po, uh, Director. Can we hear from DNR uh, Manage National Parks Division, Mr. Reneo Vicente? Natawag ko na ba? I'm not sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have a number of further comments on top of the uh, statement of support provided by uh, our good undersecretary and uh, our assistant regional director from Region 3. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vicente. Sa DOT naman, OIC Chief of the Tourism Development Planning, Mr. Ramil Basuel. Are you with us, Thank sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the DOT would like to, uh, just like what uh, our colleague from Region 3 has manifested, uh, we manifest the support uh, on the bills regarding the uh, declaration of Baler as the birthplace of surfing. Uh, it is in line with the agenda of the Department on the equalization of tourism product development and promotion, as well as in the diversification of portfolio through multidimensional tourism. Uh, we will submit our official uh, position paper in the coming days, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Salamat po, uh, OIC Chief, uh, Mr. Basuel. Uh, Tiesa, kung hindi pa nat natawag for this bill, Attorney Austria, ma'am. Um, um, sir, um, good morning again. Um, same manifestation, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, may hindi pa ba ho natawag? Uh, I have the, I've read, I think I've read everyone on our list uh, given to me. Pero baka merong uh, ibang resource persons pa hong gustong magkomento dito sa mga Mr. panokala Chair? sa... Uh, uh, yeah, sir, this is Comsec. Again, uh, Ms. Fe Abling Yu of the Filto I would like to comment on uh, the yes, Balera Bill. Fe, please, go ahead, ma'am. Please. Uh, thank you once again, Mr. Chair. Um, with the permission of, uh, of course, our chairman and, of course, Representative Angara, we would like to claim that, you know, uh, Filtoa and this representation is part and parcel of Baler. We have been promoting Baler ever since, you know, during the late then uh, Senator Angara up to the present. Making Baler as a birthplace of uh, surfing is a very good branding for Baler as a, you know, as a destination. Because Baler has, it's not only surfing. And dami pa po sa Baler na dapat maging, uh, you know, na pwedeng pakinabangan as a tourist destination, tourism destination. Uh, of course, yun nga po, yung branding, it's a very, very good branding for Baler to be a, you know, a surfing destination. Plus the fact na I would like to take this opportunity, uh, Congressman, to please uh, also put in, in your map that uh, Baler could be a very good mice destination a MICE destination, a meeting, incentive, conference, and events destination because you are very close to Metro Manila. And um, though this is not part of what we are, you know, we interpose no objection with all your bills, you know po. But I would like to take this opportunity din lang po na kung pwede nyo na po rin siyang isama uh, because um, maganda po ang Baler. Not only the people but the food and everything in Baler is of course a tourist-friendly destination. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much to the president of the Filtoa, Mamfe. Thank you for promoting of Baler and Aurora. Uh, you're part and parcel of our uh, success over the last decade and a half. Uh, at tama po kayo. Uh, that's why we, uh, Congressman and Congressman and I, have a joint project, yung convention center po ng, uh, ng Aurora. So that will be completed, I think, uh, in a few months, di ba, Congressman? In two weeks or, in or three weeks, weeks uh, Mr. Chair. Opo. What's the capacity of the convention center? Just so uh, we, we can With your permission, that. Mr. Chair, I would like to yes, go ahead, uh, Congressman, answer please. the uh, or the suggestion of uh, Ma'am Fe. Uh, truly so, uh, Ma'am Fe. Uh, napansin din po namin yan together with Senator Sani. And yung nung Congressman pa po siya, nung ako ay uh, kanyang Chief of Staff, the main goal ang people of Aurora, Baler in particular, and together with the eight towns, Yung tourism po ang aming uh, main uh, industry together with agriculture. So for us to be able to uh, entice 
or get more tourists, kailangan isolve mo namin yung problema ng baler. Gaya nga na nasabi po natin, basta may turista, may problema rin po yan nakakibat. Yung ating protection sa environment. So gusto ko pong ibalita, not only to Ma'am Fe, but to the people who are uh, present today and uh, maybe listening or watching us. Kasi po, we've been uh, geared up, uh, kundi lang po nagkaroon ng pandemia. But uh, again, with Senator Sunny's uh, uh, initiatives, meron na po kaming... Uh, very, very important landfills to almost all our towns. Inuna po muna namin yon bago namin papasukin lahat ng ating mga infrastructure. And Ma'am Fe, we have a uh, newly built convention center which uh, spearheaded by Sen Sunny, which can incapacitate at least two, five to 3,000 people all at one time. And we're now also building, I hope, kasi nag-uunahan po tayo na isang bayan, the first world-class skate park in the Philippines in the town of Baler. And aside from our beautiful nature sa aming probinsya, sa buong lalawigan ng Aurora, so by that time, not only surfing, not only the uh, conventions, not only the uh, camping trails, etc., etc., I think uh, a lot of uh, tourists can anticipate lahat ng magaganda sa aming lalawigan. That's all, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po. Salamat, uh, Congressman. Thank you for uh, all your efforts uh, for our, country, our kababayans in Baler. So any any other uh, comments from uh, our resource persons or stakeholders, uh, Comsec? Uh, that would be all, sir, for on-site and online for the Baler okay. bill. Sige. So maybe we'll just refer the bills to ATWG for final uh, uh, preparation or polishing of the measures. So salamat, salamat po sa lahat, uh, kila congressman, kila mayor, sa lahat ng dumalo to comment on these bills. Uh, we still have... Uh, uh, one more measure. This is the, or two more measures. One is a, one is the Northern Antique. This is Senate Bill 238, Northern Antique Protected Seascape and Landscape Act, and our resolution on sustainable nature-based uh, tourism. So, well, they both deal with the protection. Uh, one is specific to Antique, and the other is just to promote uh, the country as an ecotourism uh, destination, uh, just to uh realize the potentials uh, nung ating bansa na mabigyan ho ng trabaho at uh, uh kita na sapat ang ating mga kababayan so let's let's recognize our, our officials who have been waiting from uh, uh, so we thank uh, our congressman Romel and we suspend consideration of the uh aurora measures and salamat po sa lahat na nagcomment dito we'll now open discussion on the northern antique uh, protected Seascape and Landscape Act of 2022. Kasama rin po natin, I think we recognized Mayor Bandoha earlier. We also have Mayor Jose Jeffrey Lumugda of the Municipality of Tulasi. So can we hear from our Mayor, Mayor Bandoha from the Municipality of Tibiao? Is he still with us, uh, Bernardine? Are the mayors still around? Sir Mayor uh, Jeffrey Lumogdang of the Municipality of Colasi is online. Uh, Mayor Lumogdang? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mayor Lumogdang, kayo na po. Anong Hello. comment niyo dito sa Senate Bill 238 sa protected uh, Northern Antique Protected Seascape and Landscape? Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we already sent our recommendation through our comsec for your consideration, sir. Ano po yun? I already sent our recommendation for the... Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Salamat ho. Salamat, Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll take that into consideration. Thank you po, Mayor. Salamat. Uh, Mayor Bandoha, are, is he around? Uh, uh, Bernardine? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mayor Bandoha? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Gandang umaga, Mayor. The four municipalities comprising the Northern Antique Protected Landscape and Seascape already formed a council which we in Tibiao are willing to join to form an initial management group while the legislation is awaiting passage. We will already do our best to prepare and protect. We are a dugong habitat and we need to do all we can to make sure our seas remain hospitable to these wondrous creatures which ensure balance to our ecosystem. Thank you. Salamat po. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor Bandoha. 
Can we hear from the DNR, uh, Yusek de la Peña, once more? Yusek? Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for uh, acknowledging us again. Uh, on behalf of the, of the department, we would like to express our support for the passage of Senate Bill 238, establishing Northern Antique Protected Seascape and Landscape located in the municipalities of Libertad, Pandan, Sebaste, Colasi, and Timbiao in the province of Antique as responsible community based ecotourism zones. The goals of we are in agreement with the bill's goals of developing and promoting these areas into a community-based ecological tourist destination, generating investments, creating livelihood opportunities, and protecting natural resources within the areas, including the mangroves, other aquatic plants, and migratory and local birds. Further, uh, it can be noted that some elements of the bill are similar to the National Integrated Protected Area System, or NIPAS, Framework provided under RA 7586 as amended by RA 11038 or the expanded NIPAS Act of 2018. Uh, along this line, we just would like to request consideration of our comments uh, and recommendations that were provided to the Secretariat earlier. Uh, that is all, Mr. Chair. We express our support to, to this Senate bill. Thank you, sir. Thank you again, uh, Yusek de la Peña. Certainly, we will consider uh, the inputs of the department. Salamat po. Uh, can we hear from uh, DOT Region 6? We have with us Director Crisma Rodriguez. Yes, um, good morning, Mr. Chair and all the members of the committee. Um, the Department of Tourism Region 6 interposes no objection and manifests its full support to Senate Bill Number 238 introduced by the Honorable Senator Lauren B. Legarda. Section 2C of the Republic Act Number 9593, otherwise known as the Tourism Act of 2009, provides that the state should promote a tourism industry that is ecologically sustainable, responsible, participative, culturally sensitive, economically viable, and ethically and socially equitable for local communities. It may be informed that Northern Antique areas positively contributed to the tourism growth of the region. And in 2022, the five municipalities contributed 14,311 tourists, which comprised 47.6% of the total tourist arrivals in the province with tourist receipts amounting to 103,343,989. A total of 189,542 same-day visitors were also recorded. Apart from the tourist arrivals, there are 16 community guides and 14 tourism establishments, which are DOT accredited in the area and vital for providing quality service and facilities to visitors. Northern Antique offers a wide range of recreational ecotourism activities like white river rafting, health and wellness tourism, beach activities, biking, rubber, river tubing, trekking, caving, diving, camping, pottery making, and ATV riding. Furthermore, the passage of SBN 238 will ensure the protection of the flora and fauna of the northern Antique seascape and landscape and, is sustainable, and its sustainable development for the greater benefit of the local communities and their children in the future. So the Department of Tourism Region 6 hereby recommends SBN 238 be enacted to ensure the sustainable cons conservation, protection, and management of the biodiversity of the northern Antique protected seascape and landscape located in the municipalities of Libertad, Pandan, Sebaste, Colasi, and Tibiao in the province of Antique. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Rodriguez. And of course, uh, you should put on record uh, that uh, Senate President Pro Temp Legarda is the author of the uh, expanded NIPAS Ni Act. That's, uh, that's why she's uh, uh, pushing also for uh, this bill in, con in uh, consonance with that uh, larger framework of the NIPAS Act. Can we hear from the Tourism Promotions Board again? Mr. Cesar Villanueva, OIC of the Domestic Promotions Department. Yeah, good, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, everyone. Uh, we at the Department uh, Tourism Promotions Board uh, interposes no objection and fully support of the passage of the Senate Bill number 238, the Northern Antique as protected seascape and landscape as responsible ecotourism-based destinations of the mentioned municipalities. Once the bill has been passed into law 
and the tourism development of the area has been in place, then the Tourism Promotions Board will surely include these uh, uh, mentioned areas, municipalities, in our marketing and promotional initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you uh, to Mr. Villanueva from the TPB. Uh, can we hear from Ms. Cynthia Blancia, the OIC Penro <laughs> of Antique, Provincial uh, Environmental Officer? A pleasant morning to everyone. Uh, morning. Mr. Chair, good morning. We have with us this morning our Undersecretary for Organizational Transformations, uh, Yosek uh, de la Pena, sir. Permission to speak, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. To the respectable members of the committee, a pleasant morning again to everyone, and uh, most especially to our beloved Kasimanwa, uh, a true-blooded Antikenya, no less than the President uh, pro tempore of the Senate, Honorable Loren Ligarda, our heartfelt thanks and gratitude for the full support in conceptualizing and sponsoring the bill. And to the honorable members of the committee, Thank you. In behalf of our regional executive director, Livino Bidoran, we in DNR Region 6 sincerely express our full support to the passage of Senate Bill Number 238 of the Northern Antique Protected Seascapes and Landscape that possesses vast landscapes and seascapes with unique ecosystems composed of marine, wetlands, mangroves, seagrasses, coral reefs, and terrestrial areas that serve as habitat of the threatened and endemic flora, such as Mulavi, Nara, the pitcher plants, and the different mangrove species, and also the fauna. We have hawksbill turtle, green sea turtle, leatherback turtle, and the olive ridley turtle, dugong, whale shark, hammerhead shark, giant clams, and Philippine duck with rich and high biodiversity value which are essentials to sustain ecological processes and functions, as well as help climate change mitigation. It has clear and pristine water with white sand beaches, and it is also considered as the Tona Highway of Region 6. There are 21 established locally managed marine protected areas in the area that benefit the local fisher folks for their livelihood, as well as the communities adjacent to the area. There are also three beautiful islands, sandbars, and islets, and unique rock formations and caves with ecotourism potentials that would attract both local and foreign tourists as well, and could eventually increase economic activities in the area. Now, therefore, considering its unique features and rich biodiversity, the DNR Region 6 strongly supports the passage of Senate Bill 238, Thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, can we hear from... Uh, from Attorney Austria of the Tiesa? Okay, no, good morning, sir. Um, good morning, uh, Reiterating uh, my manif previous manifestation with regard to the submission of the comments. However, sir, um, um, we we make our uh, we've interposed no objection as to the um, passage of the bill. Um, also, we we adopt as long as it's um, aligned with our um, mandate under RA 9593. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Attorney Austria. Neda Director, Bien Director Ganapin. Can we hear from you again, sir, regarding Thank uh, you. Northern Antique protected area? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning again, Your Honor. Um, with regards to Senate Bill 238, Your Honor, the establishment of a protected area, uh, we think, should be based on the need to strengthen the protection of biologically significant flora and fauna from threats and destruction, poaching, among others. And with this, Your Honor, uh, we think that the the processes, procedures under the, the NIPAS, uh, I think it's, the, it's mandated under 11, uh, Republic Act 11038. Uh, the DNR may, may confirm this, Your Honor. But these processes would include 
uh, protected area suitability assessment and the uh, public consultations, Your Honor. Now, following this, uh, 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 Your Honor, uh, Congress uh, will have sufficient and evidence-based information for establishing a protected area, including the potential benefits that it can contribute. Uh, and additionally, this process that I mentioned earlier will likewise serve as basis for determining the proper category under the NIPAS where the proposed protected area should be classified. Like for instance, whether it's a national park or protected landscape, uh, wildlife sanctuary, among others. So that's uh, it for now, Your Honor, and we will also submit our official comments. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director. Can we hear from the DBM? We have Director or, or uh, Brad, Director Brad. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair, and to other honorable senators present in this meeting. In line with Section 17B of the Local Government Code and the devolution efforts of the government, we respectfully recommended the funding for the tourism development, such as provision for tourism facilities like comfort rooms, etc., shall be mainly charged against the LGU funds, considering that the, the LGU will benefit from tourism income, including job generation for the community. Nevertheless, we trust the Department of Tourism in updating its tourism development plan to be inclusive and harmonized with the LGU commitments. Moreover, through the Tourism Development Convergence Program, the national government may still support local tourism by constructing roads, seaports, and ports, among others, leading to identified tourist destinations such as Antique, subject to the usual budgeting process. And lastly, uh, we, the jurisdiction of the ecotourism zone vis-a-vis -vis the protected area, in case they, are, they occupy the same area, should be clearly delineated to avoid management conflicts. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. It's a very good comment. Thank you. Salamat, Director Barahan. Uh, Neda, Director Ganapin. Your Honor, uh, I just finished my uh, manifestation, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Did I call you already earlier? Uh, DILG, Attorney Lavarias. Uh, Mr. Chair, the DILG supports the passage of the legislative measure, but we have some minor comments on the bill. Uh, we just want to clarify the if there is a if there is a distinction between a community-based ecotourism zone and a special ecotourism zone found in section two and five of the bill. That's all, Your Honor. Okay, we'll ask uh, the author and the uh, TWG to clear that up so there's no confusion. Uh, thank you for raising that, uh, attorney. Uh, DPWH, direct Dr. Del Rosario. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the DPWH fully support the Senate Bill 238, but uh, we would like to raise a comment on Section 15. In uh, item, I, I, I'm sorry, in Section 5, Your Honor, Item 15, where it says it shall be accorded priority development by the DOT, DNR, DPWH, and TSA, subject to the rules and regulations governing the development of ecotourism zone provided in the National Ecotourism Strategy jointly issued by the DNR DOT. Uh, may we just uh, suggest, Your Honor, to indicate, to please indicate the specific role of the DPWH in the development of the proposed Northern Antique Protected Seascape and Landscape. Uh, it should be noted, Your Honor, that while the DPWH support the prioritization prioritization of the project and APSL, the uh, pardon me, Doctor De Rosario, because the party line dito yung ek nageko yung sa. Can we ask uh, Comsec to get in touch with uh, the resource persons? I think it's also from the DPWH na nakabukas ko yung mic yan. Uh, uh, mute go ahead, yes. go ahead. Back to you, yes, Doctor De Rosario. Thank you. Uh, it, uh, as I have mentioned, Mr. Chair, uh, we would all we would like to uh, define, or we would all we would like to suggest 
the committee to please uh, indicate the specific role of the DPWH on this concern, Mr. Chair. And uh, further, may we also request the uh, they should be top since it is responsible for the land use planning and monitoring function, including the imposition of penalties for the non-compliance to ensure that LGU will follow the planning guidelines and implement, implement the CLUB and the zoning ordinances, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. De Rosario. Can we hear from uh, Ms. Febling Yu from Filtoa? Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, from the Philippine Tour Operators Association, we fully support the passing of this bill. This is very important to us because this is an additional inventory to our, you know, offerings to our, not, lo not only for domestic, but most, more importantly to our uh, foreign guests to increase our foreign arrivals into the country. Antiki for one is really very beautiful, um, especially the Tikau Island. Very, uh, that's very, very beautiful and very, um, should I say, Again, I would like to reiterate once again the carrying capacity um, to make the destination more sustainable. Because once we forget and we embrace once again the mass tourism, then uh, the carrying capacity will be again neglected. And we don't like to have a copy of this carrying capacity problem we experienced before. So. While it is still in the planning stage, sana po i-incorporate na ito at maging kasama na ito sa uh, sinususog na batas na po ito. Maraming salamat, Chairman. Salamat po, uh, Ma'am Fe. Any other comments uh, from the body on the uh, Northern Antique Protected Seascape and Landscape Act? Mr. Chair, no more here on site, and we see no one online as well. Okay, thank you, Comsec. Uh, okay, we'll refer it again also to a. Uh, uh, do we refer it to a TWG? Is that necessary, given that it was already debated the uh, last Congress, or do we just prepare the committee report? Comsec. Sir, we can prepare the committee report also for the approval of the body. Okay, for final uh, comments na lang siguro to. But uh, given that it's been debated in two previous in the previous Congress, maybe we should uh, fast track it as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you again to our resource persons. And then last on our agenda is a Senate resolution we filed uh, to push uh, sustainable nature-based tourism. This is because uh, we met with a few um, uh, academics uh, and nationalists uh, from UP who say that we're not pushing uh, ecotourism enough because that is our comparative uh, or competitive advantage. So we filed this resolution just to uh, make sure that uh, uh, this uh, um, it's part of our Tata Pino initiative that uh, we push this uh, this part this this type of tourism because you uh, not make competitive advantage Tayorito uh, given our. Uh, our uh, advantages as uh, one of the world's uh, uh, centers of biodiversity, world center of biodiversity. We have uh, the Verde Island Passage. Uh, I don't know what you call it, that, that, that golden, the coral triangle, that one, coral triangle, which is the epicenter of uh, marine biodiversity in the world. Um, includes our country and other countries, of course, uh, adjacent to us. So, Along with protection, there's also be um, we must balance our tourism efforts, of course, with protection. That's why uh, ecotourism uh, is so successful because uh, many people are becoming conscious of their duties uh, to the environment and to the earth. So uh, I know the we've been here for already two hours, so we'll just keep it brief. Uh, maybe just another 20, 15 to 20 minutes of discussion with the indulgence of our uh, guests. Maybe we'll give the, we'll get some of those who haven't spoken yet from the Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park, Miss Elizabeth Maklang, uh, Protected Area Superintendent. Anything to share with us, ma'am? Uh, 
Good, 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 af- good morning. Good morning, po, Senator. Good Sunny. morning, good morning, ma'am. Oh, good anything po. to share with us regarding uh, nature-based tourism? Huh? Opo, um, based po on our, I'm, I'm Paso Bet Maklang, uh, based on our experience po, our humble experience and progressive experience din po in the Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park. Um, we see to it po that, uh, that in the management office, we, we, there, there must be a balance po, yun lang po yung aming masishare talaga, kasi based on our humble experience nga, uh, we see to, we see to it that there's a balance between the private entity enterprises and the local uh, enterprises for of our stakeholders and uh, not only that uh, mr chair but we we assure that the natural landscape of our area will not be compromised so especially for uh Within the National Park, we have 7,000 communities residing inside the World Heritage Site. So, uh, in our case, our private sectors are respecting no, are respecting the uh, existence of our lo- local stakeholders. Uh, they are availing all the local enterprises of our um, stakeholders, like the boats. Our official park ferry services are owned by the communities. And we have several also community-based sustainable tourism sites. So our big resorts and hotels are um, respecting their um, management on that. And of course, uh, yung nga po yung sinasabi namin, dapat yung, yung patrimony po, no? may patrimony talaga. Yung, yung isang nature-based tourism po, patrimony po dapat ng bayan siya, pag-aari ng bayan. So... With all of that, ano po, with your honor and your uh, committee, thank you very much po for letting us share our humble and progressive experience. So, thank you po. Thank you, ma'am. So, we have also with us from the Tubataha Management Office, Protected Area Superintendent, Ms. Angelique Sonko. Ma'am? Are you with us, ma'am Angelique Sonko? Uh, well, we can go back to her. Um, from the Masungi Geo Reserve, we have our trustee and advocacy officer, Ms. Billy Crystal Dumalyang. Are you with us, ma'am? Yes, I, I I'm you here. On screen. Yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first off, we agree with the um, comment by the UP experts that nature-based tourism in the Philippines is still underdeveloped and um, undermarketed. And hence, we would like to express our full support towards the initiative to make the Philippines a leading country for sustainable nature-based tourism. The success of Masui, which has been um, recognized by the World Tourism and Travel Council and the UN World Tourism Organization, in the world stage is an example of the potential of nature-based tourism destinations to create pride of place, economic opportunities, and effective conservation mechanisms. To note, the United Nations Development Program estimates the Philippines' biodiversity financing gap to be at 80%. And we truly believe that tourism and sustainable tourism can be a sustainable solution to this this gap that we have. We also believe that nature-based tourism principles should be included in all parts of the tourism chain, from product development and infrastructure to destination marketing, and finally in destination stewardship, where we need to impact or measure the impact direct and indirect of tourism to the local and national economy, as well as conservation targets. On protected areas, uh, we believe that the creation of a national park service similar to that of the USA uh, may be something that we can contemplate so that we can create internal sources of funding for the conservation and management of our protected areas. Private-public community partnerships should also be strengthened. However, key barriers such as security of tenure for operators, safety and security of tourists and conservators, hefty user fees, and bureaucratic processes must be addressed. Finally, an advisory council for nature-based tourism may also be created to serve as a multi-stakeholder partner of the government in the development of nature-based tourism goals. Um, Note that the TCP or the Tourism Congress of the Philippines designated by RA 9593 is composed mostly of traditional tourism players as opposed to SMEs and nature-based tourism actors. Finally, to be a world leader in nature-based tourism, we can look at the country of Costa Rica, 
which together with their tourism campaigns have successfully reversed deforestation in their country. And so we believe that the, the values and principles of nature-based tourism, which is basically a love and respect for nature, should be embedded across the government, agencies, and also the citizenry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Billy Crystal Dumalyang of Masungi Jirasur. Thank you for that. Very good ideas. Uh, we have with us from the Biodiversity Conservation Society of the Philippines, um, Chair of the Policy Committee, Mr. Edmund Leo Rico. Hi, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, afternoon. Good noon. It's 12 o'clock already. Um, first off, um, <clears throat> thank you very much for inviting us to to um, post our position regarding the, <clears throat> excuse me, proposed Senate Resolution Number 472 which directs the Senate Committee on Tourism to examine the creation of policy reforms and budgetary expenditures to develop the Philippines' potential to be the leading nature uh, country in the world for sustainable nature-based tourism. Um, the Society supports this uh, resolution, Mr. Chair, and as a crucial step, we'd, um, we'd like to recommend that the conduct of a series of workshops and assessments to, uh, to identify protected areas and other nature reserves in the country with the potential and capacity to be flagship destinations for the promotion of nature-based tourism, such as workshops and assessments will guide uh, efforts to refine policies and guidelines and identify the budgetary requirements necessary to ensure that tourism in these destinations will indeed be ecologically sustainable, culturally sensitive, and socially equitable for the respective local communities. Um, lastly, Mr. Chair, the society with its membership spanning the entire country and a vast range of expertise is uh, committed and open to being part of such workshops and assessments. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rico. That uh, sounds like a good idea. Uh, and we hope the uh, everyone, all the stakeholders, public, the private sector will participate. Should uh, And perhaps that can be under the auspices of uh, either the DOT or DNR or a joint effort. Um, can we hear from the DOT, uh, Chief Tourism Development Planning, Mr. Baswell, once more? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the DOT would like to manifest its support to this legislative uh, measure. Um, this uh, measure would help in institutionalizing protection, protective measures for the destinations uh, that supports or that um, caters to uh, nature-based uh, products. This will also um, um, provide management um, guidance in uh, for the impact of economic activities in um, in the in these destinations, which may have which may have uh, environment that are uh, environment and that. Uh, that needs protection. We will submit our position, our official position to the Secretariat once again, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat po, Mr. Baswell. Uh, can we hear from DNR? You sec de la Peña once more. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair, uh, for recognizing the DNR. Um, again, we would like to express our support to the Senate resolution providing a directive to the Senate Committee on Tourism to examine and pursue policy reforms and implement budgetary measures to support the development of our country's potential to be the leading country in the world for sustainable nature-based tourism. This resolution will also provide support to this department's mandate in establishing and managing the country's protected areas conserving and preserving our biodiversity and in the implementation of EO 111 series of 1999, establishing the guidelines for ecotourism development in the Philippines. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat, salamat po, Yusek de la Peña. Thank you for bearing with us uh, from the start. Can we hear from uh, the DNR Biodiversity Management Bureau, or BMP, Senior Ecosystem Management Specialist, Mr. Rene Vicente, sir? Thank you, sir. Uh, the Bureau would like to express our support to the earlier uh, 
statement of our undersecretary. Actually, we are we are one with this, with that statement, and uh, we fully support the, uh, this uh, Senate resolution since we are promoting uh, ecotourism development in protected areas uh, through the Executive Order 111 jointly between DNR and DOT, and we would like to uh, uh, scale up the uh, in engagement of the departments, including other relevant departments, in the promotion of nature-based tourism in the Philippines. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vicente. Siguro ito yung tanong ko sa experts uh, from the DOT and the DNR. How much how much budget goes towards uh, ecotourism? Yung, we have na pala this EO111 on ecotourism. So, if ever, it's just really about going forward, yung plugging the gaps lang tayo, at... Uh, Siguro funding what needs to be funded. And then the, I'll, I'll also address it to, I'll include the comments of uh, Ms. Dumalyang earlier about the, you mentioned a, what was that gap that you mentioned, uh, ma'am? May 80% na hindi 80%. pa na ano yun. Anong gap ulit yun? It's a biodiversity financing gap. Basically po yung yeah. biodiversity conservation targets natin to fund that. We don't have eighty percent okay. of the money. So we'll we'll sub. Could you? We'll, what we are, what we'll need from uh, you guys, the experts, is really um, details on how to an action plan going forward. No, uh, how to on on those uh, biodiversity gaps. Uh, which 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 uh, which ones need need funding there? Yung uh, protection of certain areas. How do we meet that uh, that gap, or how do we close that gap? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Apo. Again, um, uh, for ecotourism, uh, we have been closely, um, uh, closely, um, working with uh, the DNR BMB. Uh, there is actually a national ecotourism ecotourism steering committee, and um, uh, unfortunately. Funding will have to come from both the agencies, uh, the agencies GAA and and sometimes these are, um, of course, uh, un under budgeted because of the many programs of both the agencies. Um, uh, there is a clause in the RA ninety five ninety three about the use of the tourism funds from TIESA uh, for ecotourism, but. Uh, we are working right now to um, to cr to create the um, the framework for uh, uh, in in the use of this uh, fund, Your Honor. Okay, I hope we make progress there. Uh, Comsec Bernardine, baka just on the lang, let's drill down on this point. Uh, there are funding gaps, and uh, where are the funding gaps? W w how do we how do we close those gaps, etc. Uh, we can. I think we can create a TWG for this purpose and uh, take our cue from uh, EO one 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 and uh, what needs to be done. Like like that. Yung binanggit po ni uh, Mr. Vicente regarding the ninety five ninety three yung fund na yon, no? So these are the things, the little policy gaps that need filling, no? So can we can we work? You can work with our office to. We'll work with you on that. Uh, any anybody any other comments? And how about National Parks Development Committee, Miss Miss uh, Romero? Any comments, ma'am? Okay. 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 Um, good afternoon. Um, for the nature-based tourism, um, for the proposed Senate resolution four seven two, um, for NPDC, um, we support this um, move actually as as uh, parks development. That's actually what we're pushing for. Um, for the, I think we're pushing for a bill also to reorganize um, the the nat national parks as opposed to natural parks, so that there's a distinction between national uh, urban parks because national parks development is more for ur urban parks, while natural parks are more, I think, for DNR. So we fully support this um, move, and we. Uh, um, of course, would help out if we can also in our capacity as um, NPDC for this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Director Romero. Can we hear from Director Baran of DBM? Perhaps she could uh, uh, inform us as to or help us chart the way forward. Uh, Director Baran, yes. Uh, yes. 
Good morning again, Mr. Chair. So, first of all, we would like to note that under the budget of DOT, there is a spe special provision which already mandates the DOT to prior prioritize areas for ecotourism, protected and biodiversity conservation areas, etc. So, as I said earlier, we have uh, the DOT also has the three SIM development plan. So, they only have to incorporate that and whatever budget that they need, they can always uh, submit it as their proposal in the respective budgets of the agencies concerned and subject to the usual budgeting process of the leader. Thank you. Well, would you have an idea, Director Baran, how much of the DOT's budget goes towards ecotourism and also of the DNR? Well, ano na lang, we'll just place that on the table. Tapos baka you can come back na lang to us with an answer. Baka, so you can uh, yes, we'll, we'll we'll ask you we'll ask you to help us with that. Uh, Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Uh, any other comments? Medyo lunchtime na ho. Baka uh, <laughs> nagugutom na ho kayo. I think uh, it's a good time to wrap up the discussions. Uh, we'll, we'll refer this to a TWG on to chart... Um, specific, very specific uh, action plans uh, uh, going Mr. forward. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Yes, uh, please go ahead. Yes. Who is that? Ho? Please please identify yourself. I just hear a voice. Yeah, for DPB, the Tourism Promotions Board interposed yes, yes, go ahead, sir. Section, you know, on the support of this deposits of this bill. But uh, I have, if you allow me, I have a, a manifestation or comment on the copy. Please, please go ahead. On the copy of the Senate uh, Resolution Number 472, if you have the copy, please refer to paragraph number one, where as Section 2B of the Republic Act 9656, otherwise known as the Tourism Act of 2009. Uh, I think there is a disconnect or um, typo error on this because the Republic Act of 2009 is actually mm. 9593. That's right. Uh, That's, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, any other comments uh, from the body uh, Ms. before we Mr. refer Chair, it to this a technical is working group? Yes, please. Yeah. Hi, this is Comsec. Uh, we only have Miss as last. We are from the Tubataha Management Office, Miss Angelique Sonko. Uh, yeah, we recognized her earlier, but uh, is, she, is she available now? She's online. Sir. Miss Sonko. Yeah, we recognized her Hello. earlier. Yes, magandang hapon yes. po sa lahat. Uh, hey, yes, hello, Ms. Sonko. Go ahead, ma'am. Magandang maga po. Yes, I'm the Protected Air Superintendent of the Tubataha Rips. And gusto ko lang pong stress yung support namin for the pag-asa, the Spratlys uh, Protected Area. Napaka-underrepresented po ng marine uh, areas natin in, in protection. So... We would really like to support the move to establish this practice as a protected area. And do naman po sa nature-based tourism, uh, matagal na po natin ginagamit yon at saka sinasabi na nature-based yung, yung tourism natin. Pero I think it's really time to put our uh, money where our, our mouth is kasi pag tinignan po ninyo yung mga developments, we build up our tourism products. Pag dumating yung tao, nasimento na yung lahat, nawala na yung, yung nature na nature nung, nung site. So, yun po. Uh, I would like to, uh, to remind our tourism development people na sana po let us leave it as natural as possible. Kasi marami na po kaming nakita rito yung sites na hindi na siya maganda kasi puro simento nang nakikita mo. Or, yung mga simento, gagawain nila kunyari kahoy. Kumastos pa sila ng marami para magmukhang natural yung, yung concrete structures and all that. So, so yun lang po. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your input, uh, Ms. Sanko. Uh, any other comments from the body before we wrap up and uh, we can continue this uh, in the technical working group? Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, all good here uh, on site, and we see no one raising also online. Thank you. So uh, at this point, we'd like to thank all our resource persons. Thank you for bearing with us uh, for discussion of the various measures. At, uh, thank you, Comsec, to our Senate staff and to my staff. 
and uh, please continue to work with us uh, in in uh, fine tuning uh, these measures. And uh, we wish everyone a good day. And thank you once more for your participation. And of course, thank you to our uh, our chairperson Senator Nancy for uh, entrusting these measures to us. So, salamat po. Uh, wish everyone a good afternoon. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul.